So we will call the meeting to order at 6.03. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Looks like there, there are a couple of updates to the agenda. Um, looks like we solved the new pool pump um, related um, yep. issues through the existing funding yep. for the rec department. So we're going to remove that item for tonight. And then on the select board meeting minutes, um, we need to add the July 10th meeting minutes. But at the same time, we're going to have to table the 626 meeting minutes because there's only three of us tonight and I wasn't here for those ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll just table those to the next one. Everybody's good with that. And I don't see anything. And we're going to add, the, oh, they, if they have the accurate agenda, the update the flood repairs is on their copy. So. Okay. And, yeah. And then the flood repair update will be, should be on the updated uh, agenda if you have that in front of you. Yep. So, all right. So just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Okay, moved by Denise. Just need a second. Second. Okay. All right. Being that, actually, I just want to run by the board. Being that there's only three of us tonight, do we want to just move move the article and then just all in favor and, and drop the second tonight? Does that sound right, Therese? That's fine. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Yep. So we'll just move move an article and then vote on it. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Agenda's in place. And first up, we have an appointment for 602 with Sally. Sally's here this evening. Hi, Sally. You're not ready? No, I Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're ready for you if you're ready. Um, a review of what was previously handed to the selectmen. What we are requesting, one, we would like to have the stone wall repaired so it can continue to stand into the future. Two, we are asking that the town give us back the most recent taking of one and a half feet on our property line. Three, we would like to have our past property taken, given back. Doing so would require the roadbed to be moved back toward 29 and 49 Avon Drive properties. Okay, so I've prepared the following. Um, well, I would like to express my gratitude for the opportunity to speak to you concerning our issues. I will speak my truth. There have been a number of significant changes to the area and the roadbed in and around 32 Avon Drive. We, the present owners of this property, Derek Underwood, principal owner, and his domestic partner, myself, Sally Wernus, are keenly aware of these changes through what we've heard over the course of 18 years living at this location, through documentation, and most especially, old pictures. Our 250 plus or minus feet that abuts the roadbed has been significantly altered over the years not just in the recent. The stone wall at the foot of Avon Drive and on our property is precariously about to reach its demise. Not only the lowering of Main Street in the past and hence over the course of years, also lowering of Avon Drive and a consistent encroachment onto our property and grading of in front of and at both ends of this old stone wall has caused this it is leaning forward and drooping at both ends due to the soil and foundation stones removed by the town road projects. The erosion was and is happening is significant. Under these circumstances, no property owner could have stopped the deterioration. Number one, we would like to have it repaired so it can continue to stand into the future. The waterworks project of two plus years ago should not have included widening the roadbed. By taking another one and a half foot off our side of the road, widening the roadbed was no longer a possibility after lowering Main Street in the past, all available land on the street side being consumed by doing this major engineering of the streetscape. The underhanded taking of land on the side abutting our property 
not being theoretically possible either by encroaching another one and a half foot onto our land has put the town in jeopardy. Removing another one and a half feet of soil in front of our stone wall was too much. The embankment coming up Avon Drive had been greatly reduced as well, allowing for the more, allowing for more, uh, two more white lines to be painted at the bottom of Avon Drive. And not just soil, but digging up and removal of foundation stones was too much for the integrity of this ancient stone wall after all these alterations. The one and a half foot encroachment onto our land was along the entire 250 plus or minus feet of our property line. As was requested by us when the waterworks project was getting underway, that a resurveying of Avon Drive be done. Old photos show a greatly altered roadbed, and we would like to gain back some footage lost to us on the northwest corner and north side of our property. This was not done as we were told. The state grant did not allow for changes to the roadbed. And yet, without regard to potential issues developing to our property, stone wall and house northwest corner, the heavy equipment came in and removed one and a half foot of our lawn and laid asphalt. We feel confident from old photos that the 20-foot town highway petitioned for in the 1876 survey never happened. In other words, it remained a 12-foot roadbed, never reaching the 20-foot town highway. Nevertheless, center of the road, as laid out in the 1876 road survey, has continued to be ignored. Encroaching ever closer to our National Historic Registered Home, the roadbed now so close to the northwest corner of the house, it feels like traffic is passing under our porch, not even in view. It has happened several times in the last year that exceptionally large vehicles leaving the roadbed at that corner and leaving frightening ruts 12 foot long and six inches deep and ever closer to the bricked corner of the house. This kind of heavy vibration, including the road equipment removing our lawn, causes damage to the foundation and the sinking of the porch pillar. Number two, we are asking that the town give us back the most recent taking of one and a half feet on our property line. But again, these issues are not just of a recent concern. Our request to have the road resurveyed was because we could clearly see from old photos that this was not the first time the property line had been encroached on. An old roadbed line is clearly visible about four feet over at the opposite side from the northwest corner of our house. It's seen in the present roadside running from there all the way in front of 29 and 49 Avon Drive, giving each of these properties several to many extra feet of property. We would like to have, our, number three, we would like to have our past property taken, given back. Doing so would require the roadbed to be moved back toward 49 and 29 and 49 Avon Drive properties. Without exaggeration, I have spoken my truth. I extend an open invitation to any and all to a walking tour, and I will speak to and point out all of these issues. Okay. So I think at, at this point, Sally, we'll have to confer with the town is, town's attorney to, to find out what um, legally how we'd go about doing this or um, those types of things. So I, unfortunately, I don't know what kind of answer that the board can give you tonight, being un uneducated in, in the process of, of that. Um, but what we can do is mm -hmm. reach out to our attorney to find out you know the process and um, and see what, what documentation that this town has for, for... I think that sounds like a reasonable um, idea going forward, and Derek and I will certainly work with um, coming to a resolution. Sure. Um, I said that to Therese from the start. It's not something that just happened, although what did happen just added to our misery. Um, 
when the town was put on the National Historic Registry, it was for the district. And I believe I was told by the lady from Montpelier that our home was the only single uh, structure that was on the registry. So it deserves attention and respect even at this late stage of the game. Okay. Um, we had it surveyed. So, yeah. Yeah, it affects, there's, it touches on about two or three different separate state statutes. So we just need to understand what our options are moving forward and then I'll let you know. Okay, so I'm going to. Adios. Okay. What was the house number? 32. 32. Directly across from Center Market. Um, would you like me to leave my phone number? It's a landline in my house. If anybody is interested in of contacting me and coming up. Yeah, I think sure. And, 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 you know, Therese has all your info, so yeah. we can. I'm sure I, I know I have your number, so I can get it from Kelly, so. Um, but yeah, so that's fine. So we'll find out. I know um, we'll try to get him out an email this week, and then I'll let you know as soon as I, what we know. But thank you for bringing in your stuff. I appreciate that. Um, we have. She has already sent us the other thing, so that's okay. Yep. All right. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, guys. Yeah, take care, Hurry Sally. home before the next thunder shower comes through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said hurry through before the next thunder shower yes, comes through yes. and get wet. <laughs> the one we just had a few minutes ago was pretty intense. Yeah, no doubt. So, all right. So we, uh, that was the only appointment for this evening, so we'll open it up to public comment. So if there's anything that is mm -hmm. not on the agenda uh, that anybody wants to bring up, we'll do the in person people first so if anybody has a hand raised we'll take them doesn't look like anybody no <laughs> all right <Ellie. laughs> all right we'll let you go Ellie all right um I want to yeah uh if you don't know um several people know that um the storm caused havoc on my basement and I want to commend the fire department for being at my house Monday night the 10th and Tuesday morning, the 11th, and doing a lot to help me out. So uh, it, the town has an amazing fire department. I really appreciate all that they did. Um, and Merrill Mechanicals gave me a pump, did pumping action to, to get um, the level of the water at a reasonable level. And, um, and then Bethel Strong came in and were really um, very, very helpful about coming and helping me clean and um, and sweep and 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 get it um, better. And uh, so things are getting better. Um, but I have a couple questions. Um, in cleaning out after Irene, because Denise will um, confirm, because she helped clean out me uh, after Irene, that. When I cleaned out and took all this messy stuff that got damaged to the transfer station, they, I had to pay for it. After Irene, we got to take things and there was no charge. How come, why, why, because I have more stuff that I would like to take to the transfer station that needs cleaning out. And I'm wondering what, why and how that, um, it shouldn't be a charge. I would think it wouldn't be a charge, just like after Irene. I don't know. I mean, at the time of Irene, Bethel owned half the transfer station. We don't now. So it's all owned by Royalton. You could call, my advice would be to call the Royalton town office and okay. speak to Victoria. She's the town administrator. She may be aware, there may be a program through the state, Ellie, where debris, um, you know, maybe she can, maybe there's a pr program <clears throat> that I'm not, that I don't know because we don't own the landfill anymore. Right. But her name is Victoria. Okay. And she's a town administrator in Royalton. Very, very nice lady. Oh, so yeah. I'd give her a buzz and see. She may be aware 
of a, a program where it could get you reimbursed okay. or? All right. Because the manager, of course, said, well, he wasn't around. Yeah. Right. Irene, so. You could also call 211. Well, I did call and, and I registered and I yep. have all my information. Yep. So if I call them again and then I can ask them? Again? Yeah, well, yeah, it's free. Why not? Oh. I would call Victoria first and then, okay. or maybe I'd call 211 first and ask them about a debris program. What do because you do? Because I know other towns oh. have been collecting and, and I know people from other towns that have been getting yeah. their stuff. Yeah, you know. uh, yeah, that's a good question, and I just don't know the answer. You're the first okay. person to have asked, yeah. so you could call Victoria. You could also call um, two one one and see, okay. I, you know, either one. Call maybe call two one one first and just say, hey, what do I do with this debris? I, I did you already take it to the transfer station? Yes. Then yeah, then I would tell them I took it and to the transfer station. It cost me X amount of dollars. Okay. Maybe they'll tell you to tie it into your FEMA claim. That you well, I showed don't. I showed that to the FEMA gentleman today, and they have they don't have anything to do with that kind of stuff. All no. right. Yeah. I don't know. So, Try two one one. Maybe the state right. is running a program, and if not, call Victoria. Maybe okay. they'll do something. Okay. And if you don't get if, anywhere if not, there me, either, you can always contact your local representatives for Montpelier. So. Oh. Like, okay. You know, Dick and Kurt, and and ask oh, okay. them if they know of, they may know of a program. Okay. That isn't related to the flood. Um, that maybe you could could use as well. Yeah, you just you're the first person who's asked. I will make a note, Ellie. I'll look around and see if I can find out anything. If I do, mm -hmm. I'll email you. Okay. So okay. I'll just make a note: flood, debris, trash, Ellie? Question mark and see what I can find out too. So My second question is: when they're listing on information from information they've gotten, you know, like emails from like two two, two one one or or whatever disaster relief, it lists and tells you about cleaning kits, but it doesn't tell you how to get them. You're kidding. So where do I get a cleaning kit? How do I do that? I would ask that question of 211 when you call, and I'll also look okay. cleaning kit, because I feel like I might have seen a link to that, but I would call 211. Okay. When you ask them about the debris, ask them about that. But I, you're right, I did see something. But I've seen, had so many emails, but I will look. But call 211, but I'll look too tomorrow. Okay. Because okay. I, you're right, I saw something about that. Right. So, because because I was supposed to get a dehumidizer. A dehumidifier, yeah. Yeah, but that didn't come through. And I wound up having to go. Other towns have had no trouble getting one yeah. for their people. Yeah. But I wound up having to go to West Lebanon, in New Hampshire, and buying one personally. Yeah. But I did talk to the FEMA person about that. That can that can be re re reimbursed. Good. That can go through your claim. Yeah. That nice. can go to my claim. So that oh, that's that's good. okay. But but yeah. I just wanted to make sure about. Yeah. Cleaning more stuff out, trash, and the cleaning. Yeah, so if you cleaning look, trash. and I'll look too tomorrow, okay. and I'll look too and see what I can find. Because I know I've read something about the cleaning kit, but there's okay. been so many emails every day that okay. I can't remember where I read it. But okay. I'll, ch I'll Cause, find out. Cause I'm making, it would be nice. Because I'm trying to make sure I don't have mold. Absolutely, yeah. All right, I'll, well, you call 2 and one tomorrow, but I'll look too. Okay. And I'll email you. Thank you. You're welcome. You yeah. I, I wish I had an answer for you now. Yeah. I, I just thank don't you know. For, for your help. Yeah. All right. Anybody else in person that has anything? No. And online? Jesse has Jesse? his hands up. Hey, everybody. Um, I was just wondering if you, I had submitted a, uh, catering request permit um, that's dated August 12th. Um, wondering if anybody had seen that. Um, I have not seen it. Pam was on vacation last week and she's on vacation this week. So um, I, 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 mean, I don't even know when our next select board meeting is. Hang on a second, Jesse. Let me look real quick. Because I haven't seen anything. August 14th. Okay, so why don't you just tell us about it? <laughs> it's August okay. when? The event is August 12th. Um, it's basically the same thing we did um, July 15th. Um, it's just in our, it's just asking for a permit for our front parking lot. 
um, okay. Off what what are listeners. the hours? What are the um, hours? Like six to midnight. It'll be done at midnight. So you do the same thing, follow all the rules. You have to fence it off and all that, right? Is it going to yep. be out for entertainment? Yeah, it's a DJ. It's a dance party. Okay, so it's the same thing you did in July. Yeah, you know what? I'm sorry. I never even thought to ask Jean to look. And now that they've gone all to DMV, I'm not sure if Jean knows where to find it. So, um, okay. And, and that was August 12th, you 12th. said? Yes. So, I mean, it's probably pretty safe to say that if <clears throat> if your permit is really just a copy of the other one, just a different date, then yeah. then the board yes. could, could make a motion to... Um, you know, now. either to add the date, you know, um, for the permit, as long as the permit isn't. I think you have to approve it separately because it's a different date. You'd have to approve it tonight okay. separately on its own merits. But but we but we need something to uh, base it on. Well, the only on that it's it's the same description as what was in July. Yeah. You know, type type yeah, thing. That's yeah. fine. When was the other one? July what? I'm sorry, Jesse. July 15th. Okay. Thank you. Same so as. All right, thank you, sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And that's just an outside con consumption permit? Is that no, it's a yeah, catering. It's, cater. Yeah, yeah, it's a request to cater permit. Um, and it automatic, I've sent it through the state, it automatically gets sent to the town office. Oh, so. and I'm sure it's there. Pam yeah. just happens yeah. to be on the I'm so glad you came, otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. Okay. okay. I'll move an approval of a catering permit for, uh, is it Babes? Yeah. Uh, yes. For August 12th, with the same conditions as in the July 15th permit. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay, all set, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, sorry Thank about that. Thanks. No, that's that makes total sense that Pam is on vacation. <laughs> um, okay, and it does need to be sent digitally. Like you, somebody needs to approve it on the town side so that it kicks back to the. Yeah, uh, I'll. Uh, <laughs> we'll figure that out tomorrow. I'll have I'll talk to Jean about it, and worst case scenario, I'll call DMV myself and or DL not DMV DLC and tell them. Yeah. What do you want from me? Like, we're stuck. So uh, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. okay. I'll follow up with you about that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, okay. Just email me, but I great. will uh, talk to Jean tomorrow about it. Okay. Excellent. Sorry great. about that. No, that's okay. Thank you so much. I'm glad I You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Anytime. Really. All right, anything else? Um, I think the only person left is Paul. Paul, you got anything? No, oh, I'm good. Okay. All right, we'll move along. So we had the um, facility use policy, which we had made some amendments to the occupancy um, pieces of a couple of areas. Um, a couple meetings ago, so. Yeah, and I did what you asked. I talked to, um, uh, Mary Floyd and Dietrich. So that changed their numbers. And also, so those numbers changed a little bit. And then also, um, I gave you the insurance or the information from VLCT Passive about insurance for, um, for rental of town properties. Mm -hmm. So that was my question for you guys under insurance requirements. Um, I will say we've been kind of lax about that in the past. Like if somebody rents it for a birthday party or a baby shower or whatever. Um, so I spoke to our insurance company and they obviously strongly recommend that whenever a municipal facility is rented for a special event, the renter be required to show they have liability insurance. So they could get it through their homeowner's insurance as a rider or if their homeowner's insurance won't do it, um, they can go through this gather guard, this tulip program, uh, tenant user liability insurance policy to get it. So um, that's something completely new. And I will say May, 
it may prevent some people from using the hall if they have to come up with a, do a rider on their insurance policy. However, if somebody's here having a wedding reception or birthday party and someone slips and falls, you know, obviously they're going to sue us, but it would be nice if somebody else proves that they have coverage too. But it's something you haven't done before, but obviously our insurance company recommends. Is there an amount or a limit? of the liability? Um, she doesn't, I don't think she mentions one. Let me just see real quick. I can't remember her entire email. She just says, liability coverage, it would protect the municipality from third and current and many renters. Insane amount. Yeah, she doesn't <clears throat> say an amount. We could certainly state that. I'm not sure if it's, if you have to get it up to a li an amount. I've never had to add a rider to my homeowners for an event before so I don't know how it yeah. and she doesn't mention that an amount I'd like to assume she would have um, I'm just curious because yeah I don't know I can ask her if if there's I, a yeah um, an amount so like I said that's just a it's an avenue we haven't taken yet <clears throat> that's challenging because you have you know, like an organization often, like I'll make it up, say the Girl Scouts wanted to do something sure. here. Often you can go through the Girl Scouts and they probably exactly. have some type they of do. umbrella insurance that, mm -hmm. that they can use. Yep. Um, but if you, you know, if you do the one-off person that wants to have the birthday party or... Right. Or maybe a reception for something, you mm -hmm. know, right? That that could affect them not knowing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a good idea that we should have it, mm -hmm. but I, I also kind of would like to know what the average person may pay if they wanted to use it. I could call. You know, I mean, if this is a $100 thing, maybe it's not a big deal, but if it's a, you know, you yeah. need to have $1,000, then, yeah. Let me, then I you could, know, that's kind of a, a big deal for a lot of people. I could probably ask Mel Washburn. Like alumni groups, like, uh, have things like that because, I mean, they just had a, a thing at the recreation center, the alumni. Yeah. Yeah. Had a yeah. So, so would alumni things have... Usually if you're part of some sort of organization, it's pretty easy because they have the, yeah. you know, often you pay to be a member, right? Mm -hmm. they, they include you in a, a rider, you know, yeah. for it. And it really but, kind of is about the hall, yeah. too, because sometimes, you know, people could go and have a wedding at Peavine. They don't mm -hmm. reserve it. They could just go and attend and, mm -hmm. and be, you know, because it's open to the public. If they were trying to rent it, right. then it would be something different. But mainly the hall and, and um, is usually the... The bigger one, but I could call local insurance company. I'm sure that Mel Washburn might mm. be willing to let me know how pricey it would be. It would just be nice to know how the everyday yeah. citizen of the town would go about, not just go about getting it, other than the gather guard, but what that expense may be for them sure. to go through. And cost. then I guess we could weigh that. Is it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, I can ask, and I'll ask VLCD passive if there's a liability dollar number. So sure. And then yeah, Laditri and um, Mary had were kind enough to give us feedback on numbers of people, so mm -hmm. that was helpful okay. too. All right, so we can. So other than the insurance requirements, does the board have any other questions in regards to the use policy? Or are we good at this point, other than just knowing that? And I'm, I'm not, I, I would support it as it is. I just would like the information. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. It's a good question. Should we table this until we get more information? Yeah, I can, I can put it on next because it's just a draft. We can do it next in two weeks. Plus, then you'll have Lindley and Dave here, and Dave yeah. had his own questions, which I tried to answer today, but he may have more by then, so. Good. Yeah, so motion to table. Do I have yes. Motion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll table it to the, um, was it, it 8, 14th? 14th? Yeah. 14th just, meeting? Yeah. I hate tabling stuff, but it would be nice to know. Yeah, no, I agree. That's fine. Just how that would impact the average Yep. person that wants to go I about glad to see that there's a there's a public option yeah there they're, yeah they've done that for years which is nice so yeah is there anything else that we can do on our 
league policy, or is there any type of I don't know? Is there any type of writers we can get that? I don't know. That ensures the average Joe of the town if they want to use it. Or? No, no. We would just basically if we don't charge, we're on the hook. Yeah. Which we know we'd probably be getting sued anyway. Gotcha. But okay. It's all us. All right. And Sullivan and Powers Sullivan. annual engagement letter. Yep. 3.66% increase. They came one day already and things are looking good and then they'll be back in October. I don't think that we'll need a single audit this year, but we will most likely next year just with the whole flood and the next loan for the um, like what, VOREC and I think we'll spend over the money for federal dollars. So for expenditures, you have to spend over 775000 a year. Yeah. And, yep, that's fine. And we'll hit that. So um, anyways, but they came, you know, like I said the other day and did the preliminary work, which is nice. They come in, you know, look for stuff right there, early out, so which is nice. So oh. this makes it official. Yeah. And they, they come, yeah, every <laughs> year. They always come before, right around year end close, either just before or just after, which is nice. And then they let you know if you've got, or if I have a question, you know, like, FEMA ha has been very confusing because you get paid some, and so it's a whole thing about that. So that's always handy to ha be able to have conversations before you make a mistake and make them, then they have to fix your entry. <laughs> so there. So anyway, so that's the, that's the deal with them. I guess the only thing I had looking at that was, so, and I've been here so long now, it could be it gone by, but, they had given us a three-year commitment, I want to say three years ago. No, it'd be longer than that. Was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like every year we got to that next year commitment and the number that was committed ended up being a different number. Well, they never gave you, what, the first year they gave you three, boom, 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 but now it's like every year. Yeah, because I've they, been here five, so we've done it. Yeah. We got a number the first year, now we're just Do you to remember that, Paul? And now it's a 3.6, which makes sense. I mean, by the time you look at salary increases yeah, yeah, and things like that. No. I just remember them giving us three, they three year commitment, and then once we got to that next year, the number wasn't. Well, the next, the next. No fault of ours. No, you know? one year was over because of a fault of ours. If yeah. they have to do bookkeeping entry, then it's beyond okay. their scope. And one year we had a really tough audit, and I know it cost us more money than we budgeted, but last year did not, and um, and I don't anticipate this year will either. But hard to not a lot of people do this anymore right. either, but. So what do we need? Just a motion to a motion to approve, approve their annual engagement letter. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. So you just need to sign. Um, we'll pass around for the three of you to sign both copies. One is ours, one is theirs. Oh no, I meant for Jean. Oh, now the sun's back out. I know. <laughs> can't, it, can't figure out what's going on out it there. It was pouring. Sunny, pouring to beat rain, the band. thunderstorm. Yeah, it was pouring to beat the band. When yeah, now it'll just be hot tonight. Yeah. Over the house, it sounded like it just hit down the street. Oh yeah. My God. Yeah, like once now. Yeah. All right. Those other two signed off as soon as. Yeah. I think that's who it was. All right. There we go. Thank you. All right, and we have a couple individuals to be appointed to the Energy Committee. Let's see. Chris Wood and... Nope, Chris no. Leister, Leister. And, Leister and Vanderbeck Gack. Yep. Okay. Just 
for hill. So moved. Road second. Hill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Remember, we're doing second tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. And then we had flood update. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So the flood update is that um, I think we've got. At this point, we have inventoried every road in town. I've entered everything into a spreadsheet. I gave the spreadsheets today to Morgan. He's going to look them over with um, AJ. Some of the work at, we will do ourselves, which will be considered called the terms called the force account. And then what we're going to have to contract out is going to be permanent work. We do know that we have work to be done on. Camp Brook Road, which is outside of FEMA. That's a federal highway, so we will get 100% of that work. Dubois and Kane got a hold of me today and said that yes, they would take the project on. So um, they will bid it, you know, do the drawings, do the bidding, the whole enchilada. They know that we want that done and, ta and wrapped up by fall. So that it, you know, because one of the things we talked about was a temporary fix and a permanent fix and talk to the state and they're like, look, let's just wrap this up and get it done before snow flies. So, um, so that's being taken care of. We currently have contractors working on emergency work, which is wrapping up anything now that we do will have to be bid. Even um, if it's under the $250,000 limit, we at least have to get like three prices. So um, that will be my focus starting tomorrow is going to be uh, hopefully to meet with Morgan and AJ and then we know for a fact that most likely that um, you know wood woodland isn't something we're going to fix ourselves but it's also not our top priority we have to focus on other things first also remember because that portion may be a class four road I think it is and if it's class four we get no FEMA that's all going to be on us so that will not be a high priority of class fours. The high priorities are class threes, obviously, mm -hmm. one, two, threes. Um, so it's, there's some, uh, we also know we won't do the work on Cleveland Brook Road. That's a bigger project. We need bigger equipment to place the bigger stone. So that is gonna have to go out to bid. So um, we also have a section on Finley Bridge Road I'm waiting to meet with the state on um, that could be a large project that is basically from the river up to do some rip wrapping to secure the existing road and possibly looking at the land. You know, there's like a bit of a slide there too. Yeah, I wonder how um, you do that. Yeah, <laughs> and that would be extremely pricey. Spent a lot of stone in. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. so at this point, um, you know, you everybody it. can get back to their homes. Um, so that box culvert or whatever out P-Vine that we'll have to Yep. Do something with at some point. Yeah. So anything that's, you know, we can upsize to a degree. People get a little upset about FEMA, but if we have a 15 inch culvert, we can go to an 18 inch because that meets our codes and standards. But we can't go to a 24 inch unless we pay for the difference. Um, we are doing a little bit of that on um, North Road. Uh, I think it's it possibly could be 18. We won't know for sure till we dig it, but we're definitely going to go to 24. So if there's a little difference, we are going to take care of that because it constantly floods in one spot. So um, at this point, some of the roads aren't perfect. They are one lane. And I have asked, you know, on on social media, if you don't live on the road, don't drive on it because the ground is so saturated that more vehicles driving on it just, you know, is eroding it. Mm -hmm. So we certainly, um, you know, we, we've got through the worst part, which frankly was inventorying everything. And now we just need to sort out what we're going to do and what we're going to put out to do. Because there are very specific requirements from FEMA. And if you don't follow it, they won't pay you. That's the bottom line. So tomorrow the town manager's office is closed, just a staffing shortage. So um, it's fine because it'll be not answering the phone or the door, I can focus on getting some more stuff done tomorrow. It'll be open on Wednesday, just tomorrow. It's just a staffing issue, so and, and, it comes at a good time. And after the flood, like the most common thing that people say is like, oh, we got to upsize those culverts, make sure they're upsized. And it's like the, the culverts did their job. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is all the debris that comes down and gets into the culverts. So it's not the culvert size most of the time it's the issue it's the tree debris or whatever it is that gets lodged yeah. and as soon as that happens because you go out and look right now in a lot of places that the roads are washed out the culverts are still sitting there yeah right i mean 
you know, it, it's, it's the debris. And, and we did have some individuals in the town that took it upon themselves during the storm to make sure that they were out there and if they saw culverts being plugged, they unplugged them, yeah, which, some which just, just a couple of them that saved us was, you know, um, uh, Derek was out on Route 12 near my house. And as soon as, well, that, that culvert was one where it was operating at full capacity mm -hmm. uh, and water was still trying to find a way into the, you know, down back of the fire station into the trailer park. And we would have known that that would have been a disaster. And, you know, by him getting out there early and addressing that, it's, you know, we started to get quite a bit of water in the trailer park and then it receded after he fixed that. So mm -hmm. during Irene, we just kind of sat there and at the end we said, okay, let's start fixing things. But this time we had individuals that were in the field during the storm, mm -hmm. um, as, well, as, well, as well as Alex was up in the Camp Brook yeah, Road yeah, area so. where mm -hmm. he had selectively been pulling debris out of some culverts that, and we all know after, the other flood events we've had, you know, half a million or plus dollars worth of damage on that road. And we, mm -hmm. for the most part, were yeah. unscathed this time around, except yeah. that one spot. So Yeah, we have a couple um, of washouts, but nothing. So I think some of that came with, you know, yeah. uh, uh, some of the best uh, the things looking at was, <clears throat> you know, that the storm was longer. So there was opportunities to do work inside the storm where, where Irene, the water came so fast that you you know, you couldn't prioritize it because mm -hmm. everything was going down at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I think a lot of those problem areas <clears throat> were addressed and people were already looking for those problem areas and, and were out there proactively <laughs> helping or actually really fast, to reactively, you know, mm -hmm. um, doing things in the field. So yeah. um, I, I think that really worked out for us pretty good. And it'll be definitely something on, you know, when the next one happens, because I was just looking, I'm like, I've been through four floods here. and. 15 years, so it's mm -hmm. like every four or five years, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, the last one in 2019 yeah, did a so, lot of damage. Well, it did a big worse. But, I, but I think the opportunities that we're starting to see is, you know, because there are other neighbors of ours that got hit really, really hard. Yes, and we were lucky. I do feel that some of the upgrades that we had done from the previous storms were pretty much untouched, mm -hmm. um, that helped out, but just some of our citizens being proactively out there looking for issues and when they saw it they jumped in without asking and, and did stuff plus our people were out through mm -hmm. the whole storm mm -hmm. yeah um, you know if it was bailing water out of people's basements or I mean there was so much that was going on during the storm yeah, absolutely um, a lot of people got got active so I'd like to definitely thank everybody that was yeah. helping out and and uh, maybe we'll even get to the point on the next storm where we'll say, okay, well, you're gonna watch this area and mm -hmm. you're gonna watch this area because we know where the problem areas are, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we did, you know, some of it's luck and some of it's just us getting used to these storms and, and knowing where yeah. to be in the right spots. But if you look at some of the people- And some of it's pre-planning. Some yeah. of the people downstream of us didn't do so well. So, I know, it's you know, terrible. if you it's go down in the Plymouth Ludlow area, I mean, that's just, uh, everything emptied through there yeah, so it's terrible um, yeah so no i think it's hard so right now i will say this to anyone that's listening we are not coming to repair your driveway i've had yeah. a couple of those phone calls it's your driveway you'll have to repair it i'm sorry that's that's it i yeah. grant it sometimes water will take out your driveway but we've also had people who have not maintained their own storm water and kept their own driveway culvert clean which taken out town roads so it's mm -hmm. it can flow both ways no pun intended but like when we saw camp uh, cleveland brook road morgan had a great example he's like i got four feet of water in a two-foot culvert he's like with 15 three inches in 15 minutes because that's fema one that's mm -hmm. a separate project um, that he's like it, and you can see where the culvert was clean and it took the what it could and what it couldn't it eroded and mm -hmm. took out the road down below so that culvert was doing its job it yeah. wasn't plugged it just couldn't take that yeah. amount of water and I think two people forget we talk about a bubble after if the rain stops here that's great but we still have all that rain up above that's that's coming so mm -hmm. it takes a little while to drain off but the fire department was wonderful um, they were great. Morgan was out, you know. Mm -hmm. he, you know, we and I were messaging at like three in the morning, and and the fire department was super helpful. And then after they were pumping basements, and and we were lucky. I have seen the two one one list. We've had a few people that have made, um, you know, gone or going through the FEMA process, and uh, some will be paid and some won't. But I, I don't know anything about that. That's a separate branch of FEMA. Mm -hmm. 
but so um, I just ask people to be patient as we have just finished, you know, getting all of the spots together and we're gonna have to go back because you have to get the starting GPS, the ending GPS, you have to measure the distance, the width, the depth, you have to have exact mm -hmm. culvert number. And so there's a lot to it to, mm -hmm. to get done and then to input it. And um, so that's where we're at now. And then I'll start doing bid docs for some of the bigger stuff, Cleveland Brook and other places. And then the town, the road crew has to decide what they're going to do. So what'll be force account labor and what we're going to bid out. So, but the contractors we have currently are going to finish the work they have. We cannot give them more work. At, they have to, anything new they'd have to bid on. They're just going to finish what we term start as emergency work or it's exigent work. There's a, mm. I was reading like, there's like this much paperwork from FEMA about the rules and, uh, which I don't think we're all the same as in 2019. So, and then all the forms have changed. But anyways, so, you know, we just ask people to still use caution. There's a lot of areas on dirt roads where there's missing, you know, if you get over too far, you're gonna go in the ditch. There's one on Camp Brook Road yeah. and I was driving the U-Haul truck up there and I knew that was there. And there was a truck coming down, big truck coming down with a trailer. So I just stopped and waited. Had mm -hmm. I been from, one of the Massachusetts Turnpike people on yeah. that road, they would have dumped a U-Haul yeah. right in that hole yeah. because yeah. the cones keep getting moved when they painted the stripes. Yeah. The paint, the stripes, they just knocked the cones all over the place and people have put them back up, but I don't, yeah. there's only one out of four there now. I'm sure people hit them and unfortunately people steal the cones and I, you know, I also want to say thank you to Pike. They gave us, and the state of Vermont, they gave us cones, they gave us road signs, they, you know, have been good to us um, because we were out and even existing uh, our surrounding towns were like, we got nothing. We have no cones. I mean, at one point Morgan was like, I'm going to need 1500 cones just to do Findlay Bridge Road. And we're like, what? And then we drove it and we're like, holy cow. Look at them as we drive yeah, exactly. It, it was. Yeah, not at $40 a pop. Yeah, right. we were like, <laughs> They're expensive. Uh, but he wasn't wrong either. He yeah. would have needed well, a few. I stand hill and I I just wait forever because people come up mm. North Road they don't care that it's they one lane mm. and I see somebody come up I wait my turn but then somebody else is coming zooming up mm -hmm. and I just I keep waiting and waiting until nothing is on yeah and then I go down yeah and it's frustrating too because if you're out there working yeah people are still I mean Chris and I were on P Vine and somebody just flew by us. I'm like, we have vests on, there's a light on in the truck, there's like a flash, I mean. And they can we, see you for a ways. And they can see yeah. you for a ways, yeah. and they just, I'm like, man, you know, I don't want to die this way. One, one, one thing <laughs> that people really have to, and it's probably, this is a good form to put it on there, but one thing that always comes after events like this is a lot of fraud. Um, yeah. So people really need to be on the lookout for that, because they will impersonate themselves as a FEMA person or yeah. uh, American Red Cross or whatever it is. So just make sure that these organizations will never ask for your personal information, mm -hmm. uh, either over the phone. Yeah. Um, and if they come in person, there are ways that, well, one, ask for identification and there are ways that you can verify that it, that you know, if Red Cross comes, yeah, they will give you number. the Red Cross information and then there's a number you can verify those people because yeah. unfortunately behind any type of issue like this, you usually have lots of fraud, lots of scams and um, so just make sure people are really well, keeping an eye out for that. Pictures. And they said, oh, we can't make it, send us pictures, send pictures. Well, we'll need $10,000 up front yeah. over the phone and she's like, yeah, I don't think so. And I, then I call the Attorney to General's to office. To the, um, state um attorney yeah she's been giving all this information mm. over the radio so i've been listening to yeah. all the things that she's been talking about about fraud and stuff yeah, yeah. and doing the and i have everybody's been 211 and fema has given me a special code number that nice. i have so mm. that i that's good that yeah, i that's only good. follow the code and, and we should probably i, I I want to say you guys put something we on there, did about the but we should class. probably at least for the next couple of weeks is just keep refreshing that to the top so people yeah. keep yeah. that in mind because because we did there'll be a lot of it because um, Red Cross did. Yeah. I wonder if we could also say thank you to those people who actually did go out and. Oh yeah, Chris was talking about maybe doing trying to do yeah. something like an event, which you know 
maybe in September. I mean, try to, to invite people that were out and helpful and trying to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something that he'd talk uh, about. And I'd like mm -hmm. to just pass along a uh, citizen who lives on North Road uh, awesome. who was expressed concern early, but then came back and said, you all done a wonderful job. Oh, that's good, yeah. I did have Kelly right after, like a couple days after, I had her order a box of thank you cards so that I could write, you know, handwrite some notes to people thanking them too as well. And, and um, yeah, it's been kind of just trying to keep your head above water at this point. And all but, the beautiful flowers from Stitch Down. Oh, yeah, Stitch Down Farms was wonderful. She came in, she couldn't deliver to certain um, farmers markets and places so she came in with buckets upon buckets upon buckets Rita Champion um, from the farm and, and Kelly called volunteers and people and came and got them so that was really lovely and, and nice of Rita to think of us and um, so yeah just a lot of people um, really outreach and helping neighbors and it's always nice to see so but yeah so as far as the flood just be patient and We'll get there. <laughs> okay. And town manager's report. No. Anything left that we didn't talk about? Um, well, because we didn't talk about last time, we did get some good news um, about the DWSRF. There might be some additional loan forgiveness for our $2.8 million loan. Hmm. And if it does, it's going to reduce our annual water payment by over $6,600. So that's that's great news. Um, what else? Oh, I did mail tax bills. The test borings got moved, of course, because of the rain. Um, but, you know, tax bills are out now. If you did not get a state payment or your tax bill says that you got a non-resident rate, flip your tax bill over. There's a number for the tax department. We can't help you with that, but they can. They're the ones who check those magic boxes. So, um, and then they'll let us know and we'll issue you a a revised tax bill. So, and then again, the town manager's office is closed tomorrow. The clerk's office is open. I'm not sure if Jean's only open till one tomorrow. Honestly, I can't remember her hours. Um, but the town manager's side will be closed all day tomorrow for staffing issues. So, and I think that is it. else was in there honestly some stuff from right road and uh, select board minutes from 26 uh, oh the contribution rate for visas dropped for the town so that's nice nice for us Get out of it and give them the other one? <laughs> nope. No? It's a lifelong commitment, apparently. <laughs> Once you, no, literally, I asked. You're in here in forever? Yeah, I asked um, Jen, like, if we were visitors, can we go to Beamer's? And she said, nope. She said, you were in, you made that choice on me. But years ago it was made, and um, so we can't now. So, <clears throat> but they, what they did is if you make over a certain dollar an hour, some people have a, to pay a higher employee contribution, but the overall mm -hmm. town contribution dropped. I did not expect. So you want to do just the minutes for the tenth, and then yeah, just the tenth. Okay. Uh, we don't have enough people here for the twenty-six minutes. Right. Here, so. Right. I forgot. Okay. Unless anybody had anything for the tenth minutes, just need a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And there was equipment uh, committee notes that were in there. Yeah. Um, anything else to come before the board? Anybody has? No. I don't mind. We'll just there is an upcoming meeting of the IREC group, which is the multi-town group that's looking at some sort of shared resources or shared work. Mm -hmm. And Dave, I th Dave is the, the select board rep. Yep. 
and I think he's planning to be there. It's a Zoom Good. meeting this time. Okay. That's, yeah, I, I, he, I didn't ask him about it today, but I did see that. Um, and then I saw Nicole Sear today. She dropped off an entire box of stuff for Scott Putney to pick up, and then she brought the plastic, you know, display thing back and put that in the corner of the office where it was before, so she did drop all that stuff off today. Okay. And that's kind of, that kind of got me thinking about, you know, with our committees, we, we probably should have, as many of the documents that the committees are working on have them in house, you know, I don't want to say we're like a library where we check them in, check them out, but because if somebody that has done a lot of work for a uh, considerable period of time then leaves, now we're kind of it's up to who's that who's in those who's, documents. Who's trunk is it sitting in? Yeah, so it might be. <clears throat> I don't know if how we go about doing it, or if we request that that information stays at the town and. We could, I mean, everybody you know, could. There's a filing cabinet there. House or There's a filing <clears throat> cabinet there. People could put stuff in there. I know some people, Nicole, obviously very tech savvy. She's right. really smart that way. So she had a lot of stuff, you know, that way. But you could provide, I assume, the committees with a mm -hmm. thumb drive or something. I mean, you get all their meeting minutes. But if there was some document they were working on, I'm sure. Projects or, you know, yeah, just yeah. information they've collected over the years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah, class four committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have all that stuff. Oh, good. Yeah, we didn't lose anything there. That's all here. We that's all in the office. But um, but yeah, it's something you could um, ask them if they have hard print out no hard copies. And that's what the health officer does. You know, he comes in and files right. his stuff. He has files. It's just good to have it at the town office yeah. in case something does happen, or somebody's going to have a leave of absence for a while, and somebody's yeah. going to take over. Or yep. It's electronic. Maybe there's some way of sharing electronic files. Put them on a oh. town oh, server somehow. Or was yeah. Nicole the web contact person? Yeah, she did. I think so. I think she did. She, yeah, she did the. She did your. Um, so not we, Facebook. So that committee Facebook needs page? to relook at that, right? She did. I don't think you guys had your own web. She just must have, she made, she did your Facebook page. So you could just email her directly and ask her about that. I know we had the... We, I'm trying to remember what our policy says. Oh, there's a social media policy that says you have, yeah, one person who's your main contact. And, and that person also had provided us with our username and password. Um, but it would be easy for you to just reach out to Nicole and find out what, um, and ask her about it. You know, if she's still willing to do that. Uh, Jesse is saying that EIC has everything in Google Docs, which is yeah, nice. Okay. It's a good way to do it. I know that's way better connections did everything was in Google Docs, mm -hmm. so that's handy too. So okay. All right. <clears throat> so that's anything else to come to the board? If not, um, we just have a executive session to go in and discuss the evaluation of Therese. Hearing nothing else, just need a motion to enter executive session to go over Teresa's evaluation. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Al.